What's going on everybody? Back to our fourth part of the series. So that way we can take a closer look at the controller and any of the specifics that it has. And then we're gonna go and test our beam alignment to make sure that we are ready to jump into our first project. So hang on tight and let's get into it. All right, so here we are at the controller. It's now powered up. We've gone through the homing process that you saw in the previous video. And we're just gonna go through each one of the menus one by one and just show anything that is potentially important. So here we are in the home screen and this is just showing what the machine is currently doing. You've got what files currently loaded and ready to run, location, and then what it's doing. So idle, run, stop, all that kind of stuff. So if I go ahead and I hit play, it'll go ahead and it's saying it's running. So I stopped it. So that way it doesn't run the machine. You've also got down here your different buttons that interact with this. So you've got the Z axis that is the bed up and down and also X, Y here. So this is gonna to be towards the back of the machine, front of the machine, left and right. Um, U, which this machine doesn't currently have, um, you potentially could use like a rotary system with that, but the rotary on this machine runs off of the Y axis. So it will kind of take place of these buttons here rather than um, running the Y axis. And then obviously your start and stop. So if there is a job currently loaded, you hit start, it will run the job, stop will stop it. Um, if you hit the start button again, it will pause it and then you get it again to, to run it. Uh, so then we'll jump over here to manual. So same thing, you got your same buttons here, but something that I love about this screen is that you can make precise small movements. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this unlock button and you see all of the buttons light up. So here, so first off, there is a high and low speed. So if you click this, you'll see that it drops to a low speed here and it even says low speed mode. If you click that here, it goes to high speed mode and that controls your X, Y, so that way you can move to a position quickly. You can also put in where you want it to move to. You can designate what coordinates and then it will move the laser to that position. One of the nice things is using these buttons here, you've got this nudge here. So it's basically saying I've got it set to 0.5 and so it will move 0.5 millimeters every time I hit this button. It will not just move as I hold it, like it would do that here. So this button here, the high low speed controls this. These buttons here are all nudge for small precise movements. So you can come in here, you can click on this and you can set it to whatever you want. So if I wanted to set it to say 60 millimeters, I could do that and every time I click this, the head will move 60 millimeters. And I can see that over there that it's doing it. But that's what this is for. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set it back to 0.5 because I think that this would be an awesome setting so that you can line up easily with your print and cuts. So that's what you see in manual. Um, the reset button, that's gonna reset your axes. So the X and Y, it'll take it back, send it to home, just as if you were going to start up the machine fresh. Um, your file, this is going to show any files that are currently loaded on the machine and ready to use. Currently, we have no files. The menu, so this pulls up a bunch of different options that you can look at. Obviously language, if you wanted to change the language. Um, IP, this is gonna be able to set up the machine via ethernet or also to make sure that you have it set up ready so you can connect via Wi-Fi. I'm gonna do a separate video for setting up the Wi-Fi, um, but this will just be going over the controller. Um, so diagnostics. So anytime you want to figure out what's going on with the machine or if you have something wrong, uh, this is where you would see it. So you can look at the different sensors. So you can see here, I actually opened one of the side doors and so I've got lid protection. Um, and then I went and jammed a wedge in my X left limit. So you can see like those are now activated. But if I go and take those things off and close the door, those will close. So there, now you can see that those were triggered. Now they're not. Same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and just open the lid and you'll see that lid protection comes on. So wanting to make sure that any of this stuff is still functioning 
and you're getting the right readings, this is where you would go in the diagnostic menus. And so you can see a little bit more about the RF tube as well. So we go back to menu and, and then U-Disc. This is going to show if we have a um, USB plugged in here, so a thumb drive. It's gonna go and show us all of the stuff that we can pull over from the files. Our external devices, we talked a little bit about this. This is the smart control for our exhaust and our air pumps. So if you wanted to turn that on or off, you can switch that here. And then the lamp. So this is actually the light inside the cabinet. So right now it's set at 100, but you could turn it off and you can go ahead and do different brightnesses. Um, this is something that I really like and I think is super useful is it actually has preset positions which are the same positions that I use for alignment all the time. So we're gonna check alignment here in just a minute and we're gonna use this upper left and bottom right to just check and see where things are at so that way we can know if we need to make any adjustments or not. Um, but yeah, you can do all of the different corners so that way you can check the alignment easily. You can turn off the red pointer um, and then you can even make a setting so that anytime you open the door or open the lid that the red light turns off. So pretty cool. Um, you can also go and change your power here. Um, so like 20% for this 130 watt tube is probably a pretty good power. Uh, for our 38 watt tube, the RF, we'll set it to 90 when we're trying to test our alignment. So we'll go ahead and stay there. And this right here is your pulse button. So you hit that, that's gonna fire the machine. Um, you can toggle between laser one and two. Uh, it does take a brief second, so that way the elevator in the back can lift and put the mirror in position so it's ready for laser two. But you just toggle that and it will be able to make the movements so that way you're firing laser two versus laser one. So we're gonna go back. So that's alignment and then we've got axis reset. So same thing on that other menu. Um, if you click axis reset, it's gonna go ahead home the machine. Multi origins, I'm not gonna get into that here. Um, it's not something that I really use, but then a lot of this other stuff is really things that I wouldn't touch unless you really know why you're doing it or you have support team telling you to do it. Um, factory settings. This is kind of stuff that you can already access with Lightburn or with RD Works. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave that alone for now and we're gonna move back to the rest of the controller. So we're gonna go back into home. So now it shows us this origin, frame, all that stuff. Um, so then this autofocus button. So this is to trigger the autofocus. You click it and it gives you kind of a warning like, hey, this is gonna happen. You wanna make sure that you've got something underneath your laser head so it doesn't just jam it into the table. So I'm gonna say cancel since I'm not wanting to do that right now. Um, and then let's go ahead and go back to home. So once we are at home, there is an origin button and a frame button. So the origin button, you go and you set the origin and it tells you the origin that is set right there. And then the frame button, you click frame and it's going to frame whatever job you currently have sitting in the machine. So like right now, the laser head is moving around and it's trying to show me what work it's going to do. So that is the general overview of the controller and the different functions that it has. So let's go ahead, we're gonna get back into our menu here and go into alignment and we're gonna test the alignment so we can make sure that we're ready for our, our first project. All right, so we're gonna get ready to do our alignment check. So we're gonna use the menu that is inside of the controller. Um, so you go into menu and then go to alignment. So first off, I did turn off uh, my door protection so that way I could show you this better, but I've got just some blue tape. Um, you can use any kind of masking tape that can go over the laser head. That's all I'm checking is at the laser head at two extreme points to see if it looks aligned. Really this machine and the one laser machines should come aligned, um, but it's always good to check. So the first thing we're gonna do, now that I've got tape on the laser head, we're gonna check in the far left back position because that is the closest spot to the, the lasers. So we're gonna test laser one first. So we're gonna do a pulse. 
and I got a pulse on it. And then we're going to come to the back right. And I'm going to take you out and show you. So you can see right there, there is the pulse. Um, and that we're going to go and try and match it. And so now we're going to go ahead and pulse again and just see where it lands. And it looks like it's hitting the same exact point. So we're good on the alignment for our glass tube. So now we're going to switch over to our RF tube and make sure that it is hitting the same spots just the same. Okay, so now we're going to go and test laser number two. So that's going to be our RF. So we switch that to two. It's going to make its change. We're going to go after I've already put some new tape here. So we're going to send it to our upper left. We're going to go ahead and pulse. I can see that it hit and then we're going to come bottom right. And you can see where that pulse mark is right there. So now we're going to pulse again. And it looks like it hit in pretty much that exact same spot. So we're good. So if for some reason you did have some kind of misalignment with your tubes, I do have a couple of videos that talk about the principles of aligning your laser, but I'm also going to go to the back and just kind of show you where the spots are that you would actually make those adjustments. So come on around back to the machine and I'll show you. All right, so your laser sources all kind of start here. So for your glass tube, it's coming into here and then out through mirror number one and through your hole to mirror number two to then mirror number three, that is the laser head. So if you needed to make any adjustments from one to two, that's gonna happen here. And then two to three is gonna happen in your mirror that's right here out to the laser head. Um, so this is where it all happens. The one that you will need to pay attention to if you have an RF tube issue is gonna be this guy. So this one is on an elevator that goes up and down and moves it in and out of the way so that way it can shoot the right beam through the hole. So you can kind of see that here. It slides down and up as you request laser two. So this is where you would make any adjustments to start the process with the RF tube. There's also another mirror that's down below in the side panel, um, but I would start here just if you have any issues. So like I said, mirror number one is back there. This is your mirror number two to your mirror number three. Mirror number three sends it down the two. Um, so if you have any issues, like this is how you would check it. But like I said, go look at my principles videos to give you a good idea of how to do an alignment on your machine if it becomes necessary. All right, with that, we've got a basic understanding of how the controller works, and we've tested to know that our alignment is good and we can get ready to start doing projects. So on our next video, we're gonna go ahead, connect Lightburn, do all the things on the computer side that we need to, to get the machine ready to run and run our first project. And then we're gonna be done. That is gonna be the last video in the series. So I hope that this video was helpful. It got you ready to go and you're ready for the next one. Please like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.